Darlings of the Willow. We're on season two now, which is super exciting. And we have a new little cover um, here, which is very cool. We get to see Kazu, who I'm still obsessed with, um, very much so. Um, this is interesting. It says, May talks about Ikebanas and names the price. I can't even begin to comprehend what that means, but um, let's find out. Ooh. That's right. New cover art. Huh. All right. Chapter one. The contract. Ooh. Contract with whom? Tonight. I have no time to sleep. Moon viewing. May, looking away, answered hesitantly. A seal. Involuntarily clenching her left hand into a fist, she hid it in the folds of her clothes. So it was the hand. It was the hand. <laughs> I was trying to remember, like, it was, was it something that her dad gave her or was it the, the mark on her hand? Perhaps I do know something. Masamune nodded, realizing that this was no t place to continue the conversation. He said, you better leave now. Please don't argue. May arrived at the house with no uh, recollection of her trip back. The walls of the temporary dwelling didn't bring comfort, only intensifying her feeling of inner emptiness. She closed her eyes, covering her face with her hands. Her mind stubbornly refused to come to terms with what had happened. May kept reliving the events at the Okia over and over again. I distract myself with something, otherwise I'll go mad. She checked on Karen, then she stayed outside for a bit, breathing in the frosty air. She tried to find wisdom or at least peace in the north wind. Leaning over, May scooped up a handful of snow. She began rubbing it on her face. Preparing her life uh, as a geisha, always caring for her skin. She had never done anything like this. Her cheeks started stinging when burning with cold. She exhaled noisily. Drops of water fell from her pale fingers. Masamune returned in the evening. He expected to find her upset, sad, and depressed. However, the young woman sitting by the hearth appeared completely calm. No confusion, no anxiety. She didn't ask about the okiyo or the body of Mr. Chico, and he was in no hurry to start a conversation himself. Finally, May turned her gaze to her eye. A flame flashed in her eyes. I have an idea about the seal that the Ryogi talked about. Is that so? When I tried to master my magic and learn how to control it, I discovered a magical mark on my palm. His sign is normally invisible. The one who noticed it said that it could be some kind of symbol of belonging to something, a talisman, or some kind of key. That's right, he did say that. Ryogi kept repeating something about a sealed gate. Sealed, locked, and a seal, a key. May agree with what Araya was implying. That also may explain the real gate's weakness. After that fight in the old garden, my palm hurt. I didn't think much of it. I thought I might have hurt myself, although I was unable to recall when or how. The symbol causes great pain when it manifests itself. This probably happens when the magic dormant within it activates. Perhaps the key to the Ryogi's prize gate also interferes with and resists their magic. Masamune repeated the yokai's words. The Kitsune have a seal, and the Kitsune have... They were not hunting for all the foxes, but a specific one. The one who was hidden away in a human body as a child. She grew up, gaining strength among people, suspecting nothing, and keeping the key safe. The Ryogi searched the forest and villages and killed Kitsune, the wrong ones. May concluded. The one they were looking for lived an ordinary life as a Maiko in the middle of a big city without giving herself away. Which did you rely on more, logic or intuition? She shrugged slightly as she explained. It's likely arranging Ikebana. It is only necessary to capture the essence of the composition. The remaining pieces will fall into place on their own. May's explanation appeared to leave the Ronin bewildered. Hmm. Ikebana, then... Well, it sounds harmonious. Perhaps this is untimely, but he was searching for words. You are an absolutely extraordinary girl. Yes, with fox ears and a tail. 
His compliment was unexpected and therefore all the more pleasant. May bowed briefly in gratitude. A strand of her hair fell across her face. With a graceful movement, she readjusted it. Dorona's eyes drifted over her slender neck. For a moment, Masamune's and May's gazes met. They lingered on one another. He was the first to break the silence. The yogi didn't even try to negotiate. Do they have no hope that the fox will agree to open this gate? May's voice was unsteady as she spoke with anger and conviction. And they're right. I would never help them. Let them disappear without a trace since they've escaped their time in Jigoku. The tone changed as she addressed the run-in by his full name. Masamune Arai, I must thank you. You helped me. She bowed again, this time deeper and with more respect. The former samurai responded in kind with a ceremonious bow, returning her gratitude. Fox May, I must thank you. Not only were you unafraid of danger, but you have become a faithful ally in battle. To an outsider, their words and movements might have seemed strange and out of place in the old house, lost among the poor streets. They both felt that they needed to speak and to be heard, and they were right. Breaking the ash aside, Arise uh, stirred the wood and rekindled the hearth. What will you do? Run away? Hide? Yes. Then I will do everything, so it is they who run and hide. You want to oppose the Ryoge? An ironic grin played across her lips. Oppose? Um. I like her little smirk. <laughs> it's almost it's almost ridiculous. I don't know anything. I can't imagine how. But I'll get to whoever calls it. Okay, now I can choose a passion choice. But to be honest, I kind of want to choose the other one. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just see. I'll get to whoever calls this. And I will break off their mask, if they wear one, piece by piece, so that they have time to remember all those who died because of them. You have almost no chance of surviving if you start working towards that goal. Sometimes, you should not do what you want, but what you must. Sumiko and Naoki's killer is dead. A servant, the one who sent him is guilty. The one who she hesitated only for a moment, arranged the fox hunt, who gave the order to kill my mother. Arai discreetly observed. Assuming that is true, you still don't know who it is. May bowed down. She spoke without raising her head. Masamune Arai, I know that your life is dedicated to fulfilling your duty, but the trails of both of our enemies coincide. You know how to track down Oni. You have killed a Ryoge. Let me share my revenge with you. Please, I will not give up. Motionless, she waited. Masamune was somewhat taken aback by her request. Instead of hiding from this enemy she wanted to attack. You're a brave and dignified girl, but you're a geisha me. A witch. That knows practically nothing. I'll learn. I'm diligent and perseverant. You've wandered, randomly choosing which path to follow. I'm certain that the Oni will appear along with mine. Ultimately, you're a woman. I'm a kitsune. I'm barely audible so that the Ronin wouldn't take it as arguing. She reminded him of his own words. I can be a faithful ally in battle. Araya was silent. He remained this way for a while. Then Masamune's palms touched her hands as he gently lifted May to her feet. If I meet the one I'm looking for before you kill your enemy, I'll still die. Only now does she look at him. She whispered, I understand. And then she realized he had agreed. May sighed softly. Her old life was farther and farther away. We can't go to the daimyo or the shogun. They know how to wage battles with people and command um, armies. Besides, we don't know if they really have allies, and if so, who are they? No one wants to fear matters of magic unless they pose an obvious threat to the authorities. People will not believe it. Those who raise the issue will be despised and driven from their homes. Nobody cares about a few dozen missing people. If they learn that you're a witch, many will want to kill you. I won't always be able always be able to be there to protect you. If we speak of the emergence of the Ryoge, we are likely to be accused of imitate, intimidating the common people to distract them from work and damage the welfare of the province. Well, that's encouraging. He responded quite seriously, ignoring her comment. It's true, May. Masamune allowed himself a smile. 
as is the fact that I have no idea where to look for this gatekeeper in this gate, and it is he who demands that still be found. Hmm. I understand that your humility and excellent upbringing don't allow you to speak freely with me, but since we have been in battle together, shared the hardships of the road, spent the night under one roof, and a common cause unites us, I ask you to make an effort and be a little more at ease with me. I may smile at his playful grandiloquence. That's a word. It would be an honor. Very well, Masamune. <laughs> Ariage possessed Takuma Goto. Arai easily caught her train of thought. He angered influential people, but he went untouched. Yes, did he have some more influential protectors? Either Goto or the Ryoga himself? A question. We need to find out about Goto's situation and who stood up for him. However, I don't know how we should approach this yet. May thought it over. A wise man once said spies are useful everywhere. Where can we find one? I know. What? Where to find one? Um. I mean, I don't want to out him as a ninja or nothing, so. Don't worry, I have an acquaintance who is well versed in such matters. He's. I have no idea how he will react. Reliable. Can you keep his mouth shut? Make chuckle as she thought of Kazu. Uh, yes. Masumini asked her doubtfully. How do we contact him? It will take some time. I'll leave a message and he will come. I don't know when. I hope I hope he comes. May felt a little calmer. Kazu. I'm eager to see him again, so please send a message. A few days later, the Ronin's prediction came true. According to the official statement of the guards, Sakuma Goto had found Zumiko's killer and was killed while attempting to capture him. The culprit was soon found, but he retaliated and was killed on the spot. These events were quickly embellished with additional details. Rumors circulated the ends about the tragic love between a guard and a geisha, about her jealous student who fled the city, about Takuma's torment and his obsessive search. There were talks about Goto's desire to be the one to catch his beloved's murderer and the misfortune that befell him. In any case, the search for the former Maiko tapered off, and there were no longer checks at the city's gates. There was also gossip about Kinuyo's school. People discussed rumors about the Kitsune, but they no longer believed them. May did not ask for details about Mistress Chiko, and the Masamune did not share any. Nor was she able to overhear any details, as she remained in the house, expecting Kazu to appear at any moment. Despite living near the former samurai for several days, she did not learn anything more about him. Every morning, he rode out of Karen, the thoroughbred horse, cramped in a small barn, required long walks that often took almost the entire short winter day. May devoted this time to magic training. Sometimes when she was alone, she danced. The fan, as before, fluttered like a splendid bird in her hands. She forbade herself from getting depressed. After all, a geisha cannot be sad and dejected. In the evenings, Araya shared what he knew about the Oni. He talked about his previous encounters with them. Then they would go to sleep. This went on day after day and morning. When day after day, morning, Masamune's departure, magic training, dinner, talking about yokai, sleep. May walked to a hand covering her mouth. She screamed to no avail. The black silhouette above her stood out sharply against the open window, holding her tight. Quiet. Who the hell? Is that a mask? She darked again. I can't do anything, no. Constrained and unable to react to what was happening, May was overtaken by a wave of fear. The Katsune's magic can influence their physical appearance. The world began rapidly changing, growing. Path of the Pearl Fox. A moment later, a fox was wriggling on the floor. Oh, we'll get to choose what we look like now. That's what the profile looks, looks like. What's the amber fox look like? Well, wouldn't it look like this? This is not what I was expecting. <laughs> I suppose I look cooler over time, I think. But it's not cool. Just not what I was expecting.
All right, I'm down for a change. Wait. A flexible fluffy body twists out of his grip, instinctively breaking free. Snow white teeth flash and the fox bit the man's hand. Ow. <laughs> I think I know who it is, though. May jumped, but the stranger blocked her path to the window. She darted toward the closed door. Again, she didn't make it in time. The man jumped, grabbed her, and hissed in a low voice. Just wait a second. His voice seemed vaguely familiar to her, but she had already scripted the door with her paw, and both of them rolled out into the bedroom. May turned around. It's me. Satoshi? That's right, calm down. Um. Who is this again? However, the situation before her was not at all calming. On the other side of the hearth, Arias still tense. Arias still tense. There was a knife against his throat, which was held by. Kaze. Oh, Wakizashi, the Ronin's short sword, was discarded backward, resting against the shinobi's belly. <laughs> Guys, it's been a long time. I'm sorry. It's been two episodes. <laughs> May? Satoshi released the fox. May nodded diligently. This is her. Took a chunk out of me. I don't remember him. I'm sure he's from the village, I've but I've forgotten. He... Shinobi moved the knife slightly. The wakizashi's blade immediately pressed harder against his clothes. Cause his voice was a gentle rustle. Hush, no sudden movements. You could hurt yourself. May, is he an enemy? No! Huh? How is she gonna say no? Can she talk? I'm tempted to find out. But instead of a word. <laughs> I'll go back. Alright, back. Shaking my head. Don't be afraid. He won't touch you. She swung her furry face from side to side again. Then just stepped sideways with a sliding motion, moving away from the sword and removing the knife from the Ronin's neck. Without a sound, without a sound, without a glint of the blade, Masamune recognized the former prisoner and slowly lowered his wakizashi in a deliberate motion. We have an understanding, I guess. They both achieved their weapons. May realized that everyone present was staring at her. Kazu chuckled. You've changed. Then he turned to Satoshi. Why did you scare her? Satoshi shrugged. Fox cast a glare at the one who had awakened her. Mate, could you? It would take some time. Come on, I'll light your lantern. Mate felt very shy. Everyone is looking at me and my fur. Ninja led her to the bedroom. He was quiet down in front of her. We had to make sure there wasn't an ambush and that you weren't forced to write that message by the guards or another clan. We arrived in the morning and watched. You didn't leave the house. It was unclear. Were you alone, or was there someone guarding you? In the evening, the samurai came. I saw him at the White Heron. It was cloudy. So we decided to pay you an evening visit. May wanted to show him that she was glad to see him, to thank him for immediately explaining his actions. She moved to touch him, but the ninja had already stood and closed the window. I'll close the door. You calm down faster by yourself. He speaks like always, but he's indifferently cold. Is he angry? She took a deep breath. Definitely angry. Left alone, she glanced at her nervously quivering tail. How can I control this thing? It's like it has a mind of its own. And there are those with more? How will I calm down? Amelia under thought added to her anxiety. They aren't going to kill each other out there, are they? May crept up to the door and started listening. Her big ears immediately caught voices. In return, I vow to keep your names a secret. And I'm not a samurai, I'm a ronin. 
That's even better. And what about your witch? She's not a witch. You came thinking that she was dragged here by force, and it turned out she wasn't captured. No traps. You didn't have to break her out of any dungeons. Calm down. I haven't slept for two days. The sight of a saddle makes me sick, and I was bitten. Oh, he rushed here. That's so cute. <laughs> It's the reason she decided to contact you. When she's back to normal, then we'll talk. She's not deaf, and these walls aren't paper thin. <laughs> Must mean, where can I wash my face? May quietly moved away from the door. Yes, I eavesdropped. It isn't good, but it was interesting. She looked at her fur. So Kyle said it was possible, but so quickly? I can return to my human body. She so laid down her, her muzzle and outstretched paws and closed her eyelids. I just have to not think about anything. Relax. The magic will restore me to my former appearance on its own. Satoshi, with the run and silent permission, lit the hearth. Despite the lack of open hostility, wariness and coldness filled the air between the ninja and the former samurai. Masumi did not let them out of his sight. He was especially concerned with the ninja he'd been at the end, and not because he was able to put a knife to his throat. The shinobi had extremely unpleasant eyes, the eyes of a killer. May returned shortly. Is everything okay? Kazu quietly examined her from head to toe. It is now. Mr. Arai and I got acquainted. Shinobi looked at Mei meaningfully, adding, So you don't have to introduce us. Tell him I'm glad to see him. I don't know. <laughs> um, I could give it a try. I was afraid you wouldn't come. I promised. You could have been busy. May bowed. Thank you. Although we arrived together, she's only glad to see you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> May for stepped to bow to the second ninja. Thank you both. If nothing had happened, Satoshi went to the fire and put the kettle on it. Is there any tea here? Of course, one moment. Masamune was looking at May with interest. He hasn't seen me as a fox before. The yokai don't scare him and it doesn't look like I've become unpleasant to Masamune. When did your color change? Just now. You turned back quickly. Yes, I'm doing my best to learn. He wouldn't act out of cute. A courtesy. Is he truly curious, or is Kazu letting me collect my thoughts before we talk? Good. Now May. May felt rather than heard how his intonation changed, becoming harder, more serious. Explain. What do you do in a city from which you barely escaped? <laughs> yeah. You won't be angry about that. <laughs> uh, she cast an uncertain look at Satoshi. Shinobi noticed. May. I stayed in their village. He came with Kazu, not trusting Satoshi would be an insult to him. Where do I start? <laughs> At the beginning? All right. The story didn't take much time. Shinobi listened while the Ronin watched their reactions, at times explaining details related to the Oni and the Ryoge. Then I left a letter for you and waited. Satoshi spoke first. Yeah, Kazu, and you called me trouble. <laughs> Um, we have to return to the north, or what do you think of this? I'm curious about his thoughts. You don't want to know. You'll be upset. Can I say it? Satoshi. Sorry. Arai joined the conversation. We need to gather information about Takuma Goto and his circle. You should know we are professionals. Hmm. Makes you think we are ninjas. May didn't say exactly who exactly she was going to contact. However, I've encountered. I'm kind of glad I didn't. <laughs> now, however, I've encountered different warriors and seen many fighting techniques. It wasn't difficult to figure out. You put a purse in front of the shinobi. Is this enough? Maybe this is the contract. Satoshi immediately became serious and poured the coins into his palm. After estimating something, he said in a businesslike manner, 
Shouldn't be very difficult. It's not a tight deadline, then yes. Great. Because it seemed aloof, detached. The ninja, in order. She bowed. Must have been a wait. The idea that just crossed her mind was so obvious and at the same time so completely inconceivable that at first she didn't dare to voice it. May? How much would it cost to kill someone? Who? The gatekeeper. Or to find him. How much would it cost for you to help kill the gatekeeper? You're ninja, after all. The most legendary masters in such matters. I've heard that you are second to none, and you can reach anyone. May didn't understand Kazu's reaction. He was silent. Satoshi spoke it once again. You said something about some gates? Do you know if they are a place of worship, some kind of altar, or a very specific gate? He only grew more serious. A gatekeeper is watching the gate, some sort of yokai, or a person closely associated with the yokai. On his orders, countless Kasune were killed. These are magical creatures, most of whom are not helpless. That means he's powerful. A ryoge worked for him. We need to find and kill him? Correct. Or to help me do it. Mate, even if the clan accepts such a request, you wouldn't be able to pay for it. I'll help. As you know, I have my score to settle. Satoshi skeptically rubbed his brow. Magic, yokai, possibly in fighting with influential figures. He glanced at Kazu. I don't know. Kasune live a long time. I'll pay up. A sorceress who will work for the clan for as many years as it takes. My price is a gatekeeper. I want to discuss the order. Her determination and readiness to pursue her goal had clearly earned the Ronin's respect. <sighs> Kazu broke the silence, not bothering to hide his irritation. He spoke in a low hiss as he stood, addressing Mei. Can we talk? Alone? Are you serious? What? He pointed in the direction of the house where Satoshi and Masamune were reigned. That. The whole point of a Ronin's life was to seek a dignified death. What's the head of yours for? Getting chopped off? What's the head of yours for? Getting chopped off? There will be no turning back. If the clan accepts your request, you will sign a contract. A contract? He sighed, explaining as if to a child. <laughs> That's what they do for big orders. So the customer doesn't decide to deceive the shinobi later. If anything goes go if things go badly, the contract pops up somewhere within the guard or around the palace. There's a law. The employer bears punishment equal to the one carrying out the task. You won't get away if your head is cut off. I'm not going to betray you, and I won't change my mind. Smith the ninja wanted to say something, but he restrained himself. The real game. I, I talked to him. They won't stop looking for me. Beautiful one. You aren't asking for shelter this time. If you had seen Mr. Chico, then... She was no longer human, but a monster hiding in a human body. Though it's dead, I want to get revenge on whoever sent it. It was a servant. They killed Lady Sumiko. I have to. My mother... Her voice cracked. May rubbed her throat. Is May my name or hers? What if I can find out? The gatekeeper, whoever he is, will pay for my mother's death. What am I to do? Endure? Huddle in a corner and cry over my fate? I see that I stand no chance by myself. I need the help of the clan. Kazu? This isn't good, May. Not everything. She turned away, slowly tracing her fingertips along the cracks in the old wall. The man didn't hurry her. She spoke quietly, still standing with her back to him. But that sill is on my palm. I have no doubt that it is. That it is. All the deaths that occur while the Ryoge are looking for me will be on my conscience. Every one. Why should you care? She looked at him. I can't live with that. Kazu hesitated for a moment. Your thoughts? Or vengeful acquaintances? My thoughts and my decision. Masamune has nothing to do with it. He kind of started her down a little bit of a path of darkness. Not gonna lie, but it likely is her decision, though. Um, there was a slight influence. <laughs> Thank you, or will you help? Thank you for worrying about me. Kazu grimaced. We fled together. I showed you my home. She smiled the frowning ninja. Will you help? 
I will. Takao decides for the clan. You did the right thing. May looked at him unsure of his meaning, writing that message. Satoshi warming his hands on a cup of tea was the first to react to their return. What do you say? Let's arrange a meeting with the Jonin. I see. So you've decided? We'll see. Alright, now that that's clear, but there's something else. He glanced at the Kasune, the Nanarai. Why didn't you kill those bandits on the road? They would have stripped you of, their, of your belongings and tossed you out on the road if they could have in the winter, and that's at best. You felt sorry for them? I don't kill people without a good reason. Let the courts deal with their ex executions. May, did they see you using magic? So tell she leave her alone. It is nice to tease her. She's been taught her entire life to be polite and not discuss such things. Moving away from the topic, Kazu asks May. That's it? No other issues? I don't have any. Say it. Lady Kuniyo's Okiya is in dire straits. After all, their reputation has suffered greatly. Nonsense. He sipped his tea before calmly continuing as if they were talking about buying rice from the market. Any reputation is a matter of perspective, no more than an opinion. The opinion of a crowd can be changed. I'll take care of it. I mean... Nicole, thank you! <laughs> May didn't hide her surprise. Uh, thank you, yeah. It'll be my gift to you so that you don't get angry. <laughs> okay, I like this dude. <laughs> the Shinobi looked at each other. We need to clean things up. We should, together. Just you. Take care of the geisha. The Katsune was suspicious. Clean things up? What does that mean? The death of a certain Kyo Sugai who saw you transform into a fox. No. Satoshi narrowed his eyes. What's this nonsense? Do you suddenly have feelings for him? Were you so impressed? Watch your tongue. Apologize. Kazu's words sounded like grinding metal. I'm sorry, May. May bowed briefly, accepting his apology. May, this is another witness. It won't be long before your enemies are back on your tail. Second ninja child. <laughs> Fine, it could lead them to you at the worst possible time. What are the benefits are of not killing him? I mean, I don't care about him one way or the other, but but should I convince him? I'm against it. It wasn't really up for debate. This directly concerns me. The fewer people know about you, the better. Mate, it's a safer bet. The advisor's death will make a lot of noise. Kazu is right. We aren't telling you how to perform dances and ceremonies, and you shouldn't be telling us how to do our job. The city has almost forgotten about it. In half a month, no one will remember at all. Think. Maybe there is another way? Kazu, please. He spoke through clenched teeth. Fine. Let him live. Satoshi stretched, his back popping as he did so. No one ejects. I'll lie down here. You can stay in the room I'm using. Three better rolls will fit there. It will undoubtedly be more comfortable than here. Ninja went to wash off his makeup. Araya got up next. I'll go to the barn and check on Karen. Who? <laughs> My horse. <laughs> Is that just a name? Yes. You thought we were keeping a magical beast? You want to fight with the Ryoge? Why should, why should that be unexpected? <laughs> I think the horse is magical. We don't have an animal companion yet. We usually always get an animal companion by the end of the first season. So should we assume that Karen is our magical companion, our, our companion, pe animal companion? Huh. May went to her room, not wanting to interfere with the men getting settled for the night. Agitated, she couldn't stop thinking about the conversation, about her transformation and successfully returning to her usual body, about how things might turn out. She was unable to sleep. May blew out the lantern. The darkness that enveloped the room didn't help her fall asleep. It was a silent and long winter night. After sitting up, wrestling with the blanket, and rolling from side to side several times, she decided, I can't sleep. Should I have some tea? 
Maybe someone else hasn't gone to bed yet? There was no one at the hearth. The door to the second room was half open. Beyond it, May saw Satoshi sleeping. Without looking further inside, she quietly closed the door. Look for Kazu, look for Mazumune. Why does that cost significantly more money? <laughs> more diamonds or gems? Why does that cost so much more? I mean, it's worth it. But still, she checked through the street. Masumini was training by the barn. Is Kazu training too? After the trip? May looked out the window overlooking the other side of the yard. Nobody there. Shivering, May was about to go to bed when she suddenly noticed Kazu walking around the house. Where are you going? The ninja stopped. In the faint moonlight, the shadows of his mocking smile and slightly raised eyebrow were visible. She felt embarrassed beneath his gaze and scolded herself for asking. I figured it out. Who knows what business a young, lonely man has out in the night, relaxing with a cup of sake, lemon? The man's smile became clearer in the shadows. Not there, May. Glad that he couldn't notice her blush in the twilight, she lowered her eyes. Shall I make excuses? Ask for forgiveness? Or remain silent? Her internal dilemma was interrupted by the shinobi. Come with me. Where? As you wish. Ninja took a step of routine to leave. I'm ready. Because it was not just taking a stroll, they were, they were definitely going somewhere. May no longer tried to figure out where. She understood that he did not answer. Therefore, she decided to talk about something else. Um, I know almost nothing about you. Few people know more. Is your family in the clan? No. Back in my home village, the samurai were having fun. My father, a fisherman, wanted to take my mother away by boat. It wasn't time. His voice remained unchanged, indifferent, of course. I was on the other side of the river. Is that why you left today? Masamune is there and you hate the samurai? Shinobi grinned as he cast her a sideways glance. Geisha. No. I used to hate them. Then I grew up. Got wiser. The house is small. It's too cramped there. I don't like that. I wanted to seem intrusive. She didn't ask further. But we did get some info. After passing another alley, like all of them have such tragic backstories. It's, it's terrible. Passing into the alley, they arrived near a tower from which a sentinel watched for fires within the walls. Kazu knocked on one of the supports. A disgruntled sleepy man appeared above. Then to flash the gold coin, the man's face twisted in a friendly grimace as he quickly descended. Having received payment, he assured Kazu that he would only return with the sun's first rays before he vanished into the night. Do you know this place? I've been here a couple of times. Alone. <laughs> they begin to climb the steep steps of the wooden tower. <laughs> Throwing back the hatch to the top of the climb, they emerged onto the observation platform. It's so beautiful and and calm. Yes, that's why I come here. May carefully approach the edge. There's no railing. Let's sit here. Don't be afraid, I'll hold you if you like. <laughs> Just now? He caught her glance. May's eyes were dark, mysterious, and slightly painful. You shouldn't have. Shouldn't have said that. An intensely awkward silence engulfed them. May paled, even as she proudly raised her head, the cold sky reflected in her pupils. His voice became quieter, softer. You're good. Kind. I'm not. You know what I do. Today I'm alive and tomorrow I might be killed. I live in the shadows. I walk in blood. What's important is the soul. His next words carried bitter venom. Who gives a damn about my soul? The answer emerged on its own. I do. He looked at her intently. You didn't leave me. You were here again. You were there when the whole world turned away. No, because I don't understand it myself. You're my friend. No. He held her gaze. Maybe was at a loss for words. She wanted to hide her arms in her sleeves so that her trembling fingers would not betray her. He caught her palms in his. Are you cold? He raised them to his lips, warming them with his breath. Words tumbled from her lips at random. Everything's so complicated. 
Kazo shook his head. No, May. Simple. He confidently picked her up and sat her in his arms. He pressed her palms to his neck, burying them beneath the collar of his kimono, and warmed her with a kiss, igniting a fire within her as he took possession of her lips. The stars seemed to shimmer and sway at the edges of May's vision. She felt the beating of his heart. He smelled faintly of bitter autumn leaves. If I... A whisper at the very edge of her ear. Don't. Her disappearing fingers wanted to touch him. His skin, his hair, his body. She felt as though she was coming undone, as she had no desire to resist. To resist his bold lips. To resist his hands slipping into the wide sleeves of her kimono. So cold. Through the thin fabric of her underclothes, he gently stroked her shoulder blades, her back, her waist. Mane held sharply. So warm. <laughs> his palms are hard, rough, but tender. She kissed his cheekbones, his neck, and collarbone. He smiled, catching her and drawing her to him. His uninhibited, calm caresses went on and on, at times almost subsiding, but then intensifying until she was trembling, breathless. Time seemed to lose all meaning. Kazu drew her closer, stopping her as he spoke, barely audible. His low voice rumbled. Hush, gentle one. Wait. It's getting colder. We're burning now and don't feel it, but tomorrow you will get sick. He gently and very carefully fixed the folds of fabric around her shoulders and touched her cheek. May sat uncomprehending, unsure of how she should behave now. They silently returned to the house. Kazu accompanied her to her room after, um, and after bringing her hot and properly brewed tea. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm pounding all over, but I'm not cold. This is different. It's something completely different. I remember being with the man in the Okia, but with Kazu, it's different. He didn't do anything like that. We just kissed. Just? Just? Oh no, not just. I want it. Want it more. My head is spinning. May ran her fingers over her own lips, remembering his breath. What's wrong with me? Kazu, what now? She closed her eyes. In the afternoon, when Satoshi got properly dressed and was about to leave, Kazu asked, How long will it take you to deal with the Okia? Two or three days. Masumine, May. I'm leaving in three days. Okay. Okay! So we know our next steps. Our next steps are is convincing Takao to help us. Will I have to dance for him again? I don't know. <laughs> um, I managed to get passion points on my own this time. So maybe there's hope for me yet in this passion world. So I'll keep going. Pearl Fox. I kind of like the illusions. Even though I want to feel more powerful. I'm not sure how I feel about the design just yet of the Pearl Fox. But it's only because I was thinking something else. I was thinking something more ethereal, but we, have, we don't have our tails yet. I, we're not in our final form, though. I feel like we're still like a young looking fox. And I feel like we have the, the potential, once I'm starting to get used to the look, the potential to look really epic when we're done. I'm curious what the amber fox looks like. Uh, but yeah, um, interesting. I really enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the pacing. Um, letting everybody flesh themselves out at their own pace. Um, getting the characters um, developed. Somebody asked me what was my ranking on my top stories. At the time, um, it had been Cells in the Fog, Shell Sing 4, and then Heaven's Secret. But I mentioned that I thought after the last... This, this current update, um, I thought that Heaven's Secret might have dropped down to number four, um, and Legend of the Willow had moved to number three in my mind, but I w told them I wasn't sure until I had read this update, um, and after reading this update, I'm sure <laughs> that's a number three. Um, <clears throat> and considering how I felt about season three of Shadow of Saint Four, I would almost say Legend of the Willow might be for me right now number two actually 
as far as my favorite stories um, go, or what's favorite, everything that's ever been out um, in this app. But yeah. I enjoy the story a lot. All the characters I feel are interesting and they make sense. You know, I don't always agree with everybody, but you know, I can definitely understand them and I feel like the story makes sense. Um, and the story is very interesting and, and unique. Unique for sure. Um, as far as all the other stories, it feels very um, refreshing, I think, reading this one. Um, yeah. Yeah, at this point, I don't think I'm, I'm gonna do a replay. I think I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Unless I've made some mistakes. I'm gonna check. <laughs> Unless I made some serious mistakes that I might want to fix. Um, but I think I'm pretty good with um, where we're going so far with this. Or there probably would seem that passion would go more with being the Amber Fox. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'm gonna take a look at everything, try to re review all the options, and decide which path I like better based off of now everything that we have available so I can kind of have a better idea of what's passion versus coldness. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and end this part right here. I ended up breaking it up into three parts and I'm glad I did. It took me an hour to record each one so I can imagine how long that video would have been if I had decided to record it all in one go. I don't know. Anyway, um, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and show that like button some love, subscribe to see more content like this, and I will see you next time. Bye.